All right, we're going to build the uh, quarter wave ground plane antenna that we're going to need. Uh, we're going to build it uh, custom to 144390 so that we can get every bit of uh, 300 milliwatts of power we've got to the ground. Um, 300 milliwatts doesn't sound like that much. Um, other people are using it, um, seem to be having no problem. Um, so we're, we're going to uh, build that as well. A uh, quarter wave ground plane based on my reading seems to be uh, the best choice for this. Um, seems a, a little cumbersome with the ground radials and the, the center vertical sticking out. Uh, so try to take some safety precautions so when it does come down, it uh, doesn't end up poking something or someone. Uh, so let's cover the parts and the tools that I've bought for this. Um, so I went to uh, Lowe's and I got some one eighth inch uh, mild steel welding rods. You could use um, coat hangers, that's what I've seen people doing. Um, I wanted it to be nice and tight. Uh, I've spent maybe $10. Um, so I brought out the bolt cutters uh, for this just to get uh, make it easier. Um, some flat, flat nosed needle, uh, needle nose pliers. I did splurge when got a uh, MFJ 259C antenna analyzer. Um, and uh, the adapter, I'm gonna try to make it out of an SMA uh, plate connector, so I'll show that to you. Uh, here is the, uh, the SMA plate connector. So the idea is that uh, we'll actually uh, put the ground rods in the uh, flat spots here. Uh, and then I'm gonna try to knock out uh, the center post of a, another one um, and either screw it down or potentially um, rivet it down. Although I don't think I have where I'm going to find rivets that small. Um, so to get the ground radials correct, uh, I do have a nice uh, protractor. Um, so the, you're gonna have a, a center post um, and according to the calculations on the internet, uh, it needs to be 19.325 inches tall. Uh, the radials should be 5% longer. Um, I'm actually gonna cut them an inch longer um, and then trim them down slowly until I get a good SWR. Um, so the, the idea, also I'm gonna solder uh, the uh, ground point there and, and solder the connections uh, here, hopefully. Um, I, think, I think I'm probably gonna um, cut all of these in half and try flattening out uh, the tip a little bit and then um, solder it to the uh, to the SMA connector. Um, I did bring out, of course, uh, a soldering iron and the some lead core, some thick lead core soldering, as well as the flux uh, from earlier soldering iron, of course, um, some gray primer. Uh, I think what I'm also going to do is take these in the drill in the drill. Uh, and use some sandpaper to clean them up before I start. Um, and I also, and I didn't bring it out, but I'm going to is a blowtorch because I think I'm gonna need the torch to get this hot enough uh, before I start soldering it. Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, knock out, try to knock out the center of one of these. I may have to use the uh, a Dremel to cut it off um, and then maybe drill it out. Uh, it does look like uh, it might actually be one piece here. So we'll, uh, we'll come back, um, and when I've got this ready to go, um, then I'll start cutting the metal in half, sanding it, uh, trying to flatten out um, in the vise. Um, also, uh, got the nice uh, ruler out uh, so I can measure my distances. Um, so that's it, we will uh, get ready to to start modifying an SMA connector uh, so that we have another plate to put down on top uh, and hold the radio. Okay, I've started to prepare uh, to get the SMA connectors ready for mounting the ground plane and the center vertical to it. A um, couple things I found is that I could actually easily pull out the center connector. So let me get a fresh one. There's a fresh one with a center connector there. I was able to pull that out, which is going to allow me to cut some of this off to get more um, soldering room for the uh, radial connector. And then I think what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to have to pull out the Dremel. I was able to pull out the plastic piece of another one, right? And I'm going to um, use the Dremel to cut this piece off. So now 
I'll be I'll have a nice clamp so I can clamp this down um I think I'm going to try uh, to use one of the very thin discs and cut a slot out of the middle of one of these radials and that way I can solder the pin right into the middle uh, so we'll see how that uh, how that works out um, yeah I'll probably cut just a little bit more off this plastic piece here um, the other thing is is that uh, having this pin out will allow me um, to get it very hot and get a good connection um, without worrying of mount melting this uh, this uh, plastic and in fact I may go ahead and push this plastic out um, and get the radials mounted here and then put it all back together okay so I have prepared the SMA uh, connectors I've cut one down so that we have only a plate you can see that it's just a plate got one that I've pulled the center conductor out and I've cut down a little bit of the, the plastic here got the center conductor here and I've taken my rod out uh, and run it put it in the drill bit drill cordless drill and then just uh, ran the sandpaper up and down it um, so I'm thinking I can stick the uh, tip in here and get it nice and uh, welded. I think I'm gonna have to actually cut a little bit more out with the Dremel. So that brings me back to uh, a point that I wanted to make. Uh, I have a nice full face mask. I don't have goggles, uh, glasses, goggles with the little holes on them. When you're cutting metal, really important that you use a full face mask. Uh, seems a bit extreme, but I have suffered several pieces of metal in my eye that have rusted um, all of them while I was wearing goggles with holes in them um, and I'm talking about you know very fine small holes so don't take the risk it sucks uh, if you get metal in your eye over the weekend uh, emergency room they won't help you uh, you have to go to an optometrist um, if it sits there over the weekend it's gonna rust uh, which means they will have to grind some of your eye eyes out uh, with what looks like a Dremel tool so don't do it um, I'm gonna go back make that slot a little bit bigger Get this pin soldered in there. Um, I think I'll take some some video of soldering it. Um, get the pin stuck back down in here, and then figure out what I'm going to do uh, about those ground radials. Okay, I've got the uh, vertical put in my uh, vise here. Uh, it's got the slot that I cut in there. Here is my uh, center pin. I'm just going to try to force that in this slot uh, that I've created. Uh, didn't go quite all the way. See if I can get it in there good. Uh, there we go. It's pretty good. I can get it in there and wedge it in there and then hold it straight. Um, I think what I'm going to try to do is take some of the solder paste from earlier. Ooh, it's all sticky. Oh. So you can see the pin just fell there. Uh, maybe I bumped it. Uh, I'm going to use the torch. Uh, I'm going to try to heat this up pretty good. Uh, I'm going to put some flux on there and then throw some solder and uh, Hopefully that creates one heck of a bond. Um, and then I'm going to um, probably put it back in the drill and clean it up. Um, that way it's ready for a nice coat of primer uh, when I put it all back together. All right, so here we go. Got some solder paste in my hand. Got some heat. Also, grab the solder while I'm heating things up here. I want to add the heat lower uh, to the uh, metal here. Oh, there we go. That's probably hot enough considering. Right, let's see if that adds. That takes the solder. I 
not enough to take solder, but it's uh not sticking. Ah. Perhaps I should have tried to get solder to stick to this first. Uh, see, I lost my lost my center pin down here. Alright, can't find my center pin. I'll probably just grab another one. Oh, wasn't too happy with the amount of heat uh, that I ended up applying anyway. Uh, so let me go ahead and pull one out here. Alright, only got two more connectors left, so I can't make too many mistakes. Hey Scott, we got some of your mail. Okay. Okay, uh, I was able uh, to get the center conductor there uh, soldered in. Uh, it took quite a bit of heat and you had to clean it and then get some solder on there. Also, I was using lead-free solder. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And I moved to uh, plain 6040, <coughs> uh, excuse me, solder. Um, I've gone ahead and cleaned up my radials, um, and I've taken a whack at one of them with getting them flat, and it looks like a fairly successful try. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, what I'm doing here um, to get the flat spot. Now, uh, sticking in about as much as I think a little more uh, would be better than less because it's hard to stick it in uh, and you know get it get more flatter. Um, so nice 90 degree. I've got my vise locked in really good. Uh, and I'm just hammering away. Torch out. I am hitting the uh, vise up high uh, in order to avoid uh, bending this. I've already bent it a little bit, not not during this session, during previous stuff. Open that up, see if it's enough. What would probably be uh, more efficient here and probably produce a better flattening is a as a press, maybe a two two ton press. Uh, you can get them pretty cheap from um, Harbor Freight. Uh, you can see that this one leaves the impressions of the grip here and this one's not quite straight I don't know if I can uh, do this by hand and straighten it out or not I'm honestly not sure it matters all right so I'm gonna get the uh, other two of these um, see I got this ready to go and I think what I'm gonna end up doing um, since soldering was such a pain um, I may end up uh, just clamping these in here uh, and then maybe using something like uh, epoxy um, to, to hold everything together. Um, what probably would have been smarter is to just stick with uh, 
the SO uh, 239 here would have been a little, whole lot easier. I uh, probably could have bent that in 90 degree or bent that in a little loop, put some screws in there. Um, may end up being what I do. Uh, I was gonna finish following out this uh, SMA. So I'm gonna finish these up uh, and then we'll uh, hopefully come back and have a, a built antenna that we can start tuning. Okay, I have gone ahead and drilled out the holes of the 7 sixteenths or 7 uh, sixty-fourths drill bit. Uh, went to Lowe's just a minute ago and the best screws I could find were 443 eighths um, stainless steel uh, screws. So hoping that the 7 16th drill bit was enough. They were just a hair too big. I uh, got some lock washers and some bolts and I'm hoping that yeah that's just barely big enough um, let's see here might have missed one of these holes yeah I did I'm gonna have to drill out one more hole but so the idea uh, now is that I can take my clamping piece and my panel connector uh, run this through uh, and clamp my rods through. I've, I've bent these, I've used the protractor uh, to make a 35 degree bend uh, in them. So you can see there, uh, that's 35 degrees. Uh, so I'm gonna stick this in the, this here and I'm gonna clamp them down. And then I've decided I'm gonna use some JB Weld uh, to hold the grounding rods or the, the ground plane rods into uh, in place so they don't wiggle left and right. Um, I'm pretty sure once I clamp them in and I use some glue um, and I'm probably going to end up using some foam. Um, when we build the uh, sensor box for the Arduino truck we know um, and the camera and um, the video camera, um, uh, I'll probably use some foam uh, to hold all of this in place um, so it doesn't wiggle as much. All right, All right guys, uh, quarter wave plane, antenna is built. Um, definitely gonna need to stick some glue in here to keep these from moving left to right. Definitely gonna need to build something up around this um, to keep it from um, keep it from wiggling and breaking that off. I'm thinking maybe putting a piece of foam down and then some foam in between. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna put some glue uh, in here, some JB Weld tonight, uh, which should help keep it from going left to right. I think JB Weld is conductive. Um, so we're, uh, I'm gonna have to look at that um, and make some final uh, cuts uh, tonight or tomorrow or some final uh, thoughts and changes. But um, it's time to get the antenna um, tuned. So I'm uh, going to take the MFJ259 and hook it up um, and see where we stand. Uh, I'll go ahead and figure something out to get you guys a good view of the uh, analyzer. All right. Uh, all right. So you can see uh, the analyzer is at 4439. We're going to need to move it to... 4439. This thing's not real easy to get precise. Um, probably not super important that we're right on it. So I'm going to stick with that 4435. Uh, it says it's, uh, I'm just touching the ground, so I don't know. It says it's greater than a 25 uh, SWR. So I'm going to go um, and measure this and then cut it off with the bolt cutters. Um, I think we said uh, 19325 was on the right spot. Um, and from the ground, this is actually 22 and about three quarters. So I need a way to make a mark on this and cut it. So I think I'm going to go 19 and 3 uh, fourths uh, right now. 
right now, see how much better uh, that gets us. Snipping off a little bit to 19 3 fourths, uh, not even doing it accurately. <sighs> All right, so <clears throat> bring it back to the uh, analyzer here and hook it up. Uh, definitely going to need to get something to support the uh, center very soon. May end up losing this, which would be a shame. The, All right, you can see you made a dent, not much of a dent. Um, I think what I'd like to do is move the frequency down and see where we make our dip. So you can see as we go down, since it's longer, uh, you know, we're gonna... Oh, okay, we're way off. We can just keep going down, down, down. Uh, uh, you know, I really got to stop touching that ground. I just check and see if maybe I messed up. No, nope. it's. Okay. Look at that. One two seven one one uh, seems to be a little, a little happy, a little all over the place. Not sure if that's because it's touching stuff or if it's because of me. All right, all right. So one twenty seven. It seems to be a one point five. Um, we need one forty four three nine. So go back and trim about a half inch off. Um, see where that ends up. Up as well. Alright, need to back this up a little bit. Alright, back this up. Get this back in focus. Alright. not to touch anything conductive. Alright, so we're down to a 17 SWR. <laughs> not very good. Uh, I think we were down 121 uh, earlier, so I'm just... Yeah, look at that. We're starting to make a dent. 139. Starting to get into a better SWR. Alright. And we're going back up. Alright, so this time... Uh, I'm gonna, oh, not too bad actually, 2.8 SWR on the 144.51. Um, so does it like higher? No. Okay. So we probably still have some room that we can cut off and get a better SWR. Um, yeah, definitely. Oh. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna trim the ground radials while I'm, uh, at it. Uh, they need to be 5% bigger. Um, let me go ahead and trim those to 20 and a half. 5% bigger. What is it? Uh, Much bigger, so 20, 20, 20 and a half for now will uh, get us close, and then we can come back and 
do the appropriate amount. I got all my ground planes measured. I'm going to nip them and I'm going to nip about a quarter of an inch off of the center radial. Come back and see where that ends up. So the antenna is getting a little easier to handle now that we've uh, trimmed some pieces off. Oh wow, definitely have bent up this center radial. We're going to have to get that supported right away. Oh look at that. Uh, we're 1.5 SWR on 144.30. So we'll go down a little bit. And it looks like we have just a little bit of room to play. As we're happy lower. So I'm gonna take another little nibble at it. And I think I'm gonna leave it alone. Uh, I'm not gonna shoot for a one to one not sure it's necessary and I don't think I can get it. Uh, Alright. Just took a little bit off. Alright, here we go. Try not to touch anything. Alright, got a weird SWR reading here. So we were doing very good. Oh, we're down, there we go. 144. So I think we've gotten all that we're going to get out of it. 144, 38. Uh, you know, I'm going to try holding it with some welding gloves. See if that helps. Uh, 1.3, 1.4. We can go down, see if we can find a frequency that it's happier at. Uh, it looks like we're going up. Up. So it really likes 1.423. It's 1.2. I'd be very happy if I could get that up at 1.4439.
Alright. I'm gonna try tipping just a bit more off. Uh, kick this mole cricket out of my garage here. Took maybe an eighth of an inch off. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the center radial and see where we're at. Uh, about 19 inches. Uh, and then, so I'm gonna cut the radials. It's about 20 inches. I'm gonna go ahead and measure that off. Uh, each one of these radials, get them cut. Uh, call the radials done. We're very close to getting the SWR that we need. Center radial is about to give up. May end up having to replace it, which is fine. Hopefully, that at least allows us to get. Uh, I don't think it is. It's not going to allow us to get uh, tuned here. It's just too weak at this point. Oh good, well, it came free from the solder. Um, so that's bad because I didn't get a good solder joint. It's good because I have an opportunity to fix this. Try to balance it here, see if we can get an SWR reading from this. I don't think we're gonna get it. Yeah, we're not gonna get it. happened. Alright. That's better. Alright, see if we can... Alright, well, pretty happy with that SWR. Could be better. 
that's it right there. All right, so I'm gonna be back when I fix that uh, center piece. Okay guys, I just had a brilliant idea. Um, I was trying to use flux here. Uh, I busted out some solder paste. Uh, well, I went and cleaned this up with the Dremel, cut a slot, pulled out a new one of the center posts. Um, then I just used solder paste. Heated it up down low so it wasn't burning the solder paste up. Um, seems to have made a really good connection. So there you go. Slot it, salt, clean it, solder paste, heat it down low, let it cool off. Um, good connection. Okay, I've reconnected it and I thought, well, I really want to get out of the way and get a look at what the SWR is. I'm pretty happy uh, with the SWR kind of leaning down at a 1.3, uh, pretty darn close on frequency. And it depends, right? Because now I just brought the, uh, the camera near and uh, it's going up and down. Um, so uh, it's kind of hovering 1.3, 1.3, 1.7, uh, just depending on, uh, you know, what's around it. Um, I think that's going to do. Uh, I may have to contact the amateur club and see what they think um, so I'm gonna finish this up and I'll take pictures or do a little video on the the final uh, clean all right so I started thinking I can do better than uh, what I've been doing so I actually cut a new length of uh, rod it was the last bit of rod I had um, and I retuned this and I tuned it over the trash can like this without my body in the way and you probably won't be able to see this. Uh, you know, it's changing as I get closer, but I'm able to get a 1.0 SWR. It's a 1.1 uh, right now. So I uh, want to show you also one of the last things I did is I used the same technique that I showed you a minute ago uh, with the radial I put solder paste inside there heated up the ends you can see how they're black when they started to get red I moved it up towards the uh, SMA connector and bam solder paste uh, really locked those in so the last thing to do is I, I, I found a piece of tube to put over this and then JB weld this entire top uh, so that the center radial uh, is stuck in there really good uh, second to the last thing because I'll probably come back and primer and paint this bright orange um, so that you can really see you know so hopefully people don't accidentally run into the radials while we're trying to launch this thing. Alright guys this is the final and completed antenna here. Um, I went ahead and painted it orange uh, like I talked about. Uh, still holding the SWR of 1.0 uh, which is pretty uh, fantastic. Uh, get a close up of what I did here on the SMA connector. Um, got the little uh, tube, uh, it's actually a little hexagon place, plastic piece um, that I had from using spacers on another project. Uh, I got a kit of them off of Amazon and then uh, if you can tell I goobered up the uh, connection here with um, JB Weld. Um, so it's nice and strong and tight. Um, I'm thinking uh, you can see I'm starting to figure out how I want to do the um, you know sensor containment box here and I'll uh, I'll do a video on that but I'm thinking that you know, these grounding radials will be uh, mounted inside that to hold them in their position um, also ended up with the grounding radials at uh, 40 degrees um, so final position is 40 degrees that seems to get the the 50 ohms uh, and the, the SWR just right everything seemed to settle down when I gave it another five degrees of bend uh, over the, the planned um, all right that's it perfect antenna so ready to move on